Good morning. Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Michael. I'm very happy to see you here on this last Sunday in January. Um, before we get to all the fun stuff, do we have announcements from anyone? Uh, just there's a sign up sheet um, in the narthex where we get the bulletins for if you're interested to go on February 15th. It's a Wednesday to the Bomber restaurant for lunch at 11.30. Okay. Um, I want to thank everyone who was here yesterday helping uh, with the funeral for uh, Dan Davis. Um, I know the family very much appreciated everything and, and I definitely appreciated everything. We will be having another uh, funeral service coming up on February 6th. It's a Monday at 11 o'clock. Uh, that is for Bruce Upston who passed away uh, recently, and uh, Pastor Tom Burdett will be here as part of that. I think some of you probably know him. He was a member here for a while. He was a chaplain, um, so he will be joining us uh, for that as well. Um, anybody got anything else? Once, twice, old. Cool. Well, that's some of the stuff we do here, some of the ministry and, and business and work. Um, I'd ask that you turn your hearts and minds now towards a time of worship and praise of our God who loves us despite all the, all the struggles we face, the challenges we encounter, and sometimes the, the poor decisions that we may make. But no matter what, God does not abandon us. God's love and grace extends beyond anything we could ever imagine. And so let us raise our praises to our God and Savior. Turn things over to our praise band. Good morning, everyone. As you will see in your bulletin, we have two praise songs to share. They are both in your black hymnal, Faith We Sing black hymnal that should be near you in the pew or reach in front to the next pew or nearby. But we have two songs. Um, you know the first one. The second one is new to you. But if you 
uh, feel able, please stand with us for the first song, and then we'll be seated for the, uh, the second. But the second song fits very nicely with today's sermon, so that's why we are introducing a new song in this way.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Fonda, and I'll be the liturgist today. I need to take a second to get grounded. This has been a hectic week. Um, first of all, I want to apologize for the attendance pads. I'm the little bear behind all, for all the things that puts the new date on. And when you look at the date today, you're going to see that it was last week. And that's because I didn't get over to take last week off. So just sign the pad. We'll get the idea. Don't worry about it. And I want to start off with my own special concern. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. But as I exited my driveway this morning, there is an ambulance in front of my neighbor and her daughter's standing on the front. So just prayers for Fonda's neighbor. Okay, come on. At this time, I invite all of you to join with me in our opening prayer. Redeeming God, you came to us in Christ to rescue us from slavery and lead us out of captivity. Guide us by the wisdom of the cross and show us how to live a life of justice, love, and blessedness. Amen. With what shall we come before the Lord this day? We come with a love of justice and a passion for sharing Christ's love. Let us walk in humble gratitude, offering to God a portion of the gifts that God freely shares with us, gifts for the healing of the world.
If you would please rise as you are able and join us in our liter uh, sorry, doxology on page 95 in the hymnal. Thank you, God, that you have blessed us with an abundance of gifts for the flourishing of your world. May this offering of our life and labor reveal your love as we seek to share your promised reign with all creation. Amen. You may be seated. It is now a time for all of God's children. I'd like to invite our children and youth to, to come join me. But remember, you are all God's children. Everyone is invited to come forward. You don't have to sit on the floor. You could even sit in one of the pews. Good morning. Definitely not enough coffee with this crew. Okay. So, this, this month, we are learning about people believed. What do you believe? I believe there's a lady that lady in the universe. Okay. I believe in Santa Claus. Oh, okay. I believe in God. Okay. I believe in chocolate toy and it's uh, chocolate. In a block of blue planet and dipping on chocolate. Okay. So, I have a question for you guys. Can any of you walk on water? Yes. Oh, no. Only walk I know. So, so, did Jesus walk on water? Yes. Got some yeses, some noes. Hmm. How, how do you think, if he did, how do you think he did it? Magic. Magic? Yeah. Flippers. That's water repellent. I hadn't thought about that one. It's a, it's like, I haven't thought of that one. That's not a bad one. Uh, like, a, like something you would spray on, on something and it keeps the water away so the water can't get into to whatever it would be. Well, I want to read you a story about when Jesus does walk on water. And... If you look here, you can see here's Jesus, and he's, he's standing on the water. And these are some of his disciples, and they're in a boat. And, and we're going to find out what happens, okay? So Jesus had been teaching crowds of people, and, and he needed some time to pray and to rest. So he said goodbye to the crowd, and he told the disciples to get into a boat and to go to the other side of the lake. The disciples got into a boat, and they rowed out to the middle of the lake. And while they were doing that, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray. And, and Jesus could see the disciples trying to row their boat, but they, they were having a hard time. The wind was blowing really hard. And so Jesus decided to go to them. And he walked down from the mountain, and he walked on the water out to where their boat was. And the disciples saw him walking towards them, but, but they thought he was a ghost, and they screamed. And Jesus spoke to them and said, it's okay, it's me, don't be afraid. And Jesus climbed into the boat, and the wind quieted down, and the disciples were amazed, and they, they didn't understand what had just happened. Their, their minds still weren't open to Jesus' miracles. It was going to take a little bit more time for them to really understand everything that was going on. So I wonder, if you were one of the disciples in this story when this happened, 
What do you think you would have done? What do you think you would have done? Okay. What about you? Scream for your life. Yeah, probably. Oh, you'd get it in the water and start swimming. Okay. What about you? I would walk on water so mm, Okay. Well, this is just one of the miracles that Jesus did. And, and he did some of these miracles to help people believe. And that's, that's a big part of what we're learning about this month is people who believed. So can you guys help me with the repeat after me prayer? Yes. Okay. Dear God. Dear God. Help us believe. Help us believe. Even when it's hard and scary. Even when it's hard and scary. Amen. Amen. All right. I need your help with one more thing. The Lord's that, prayer. That's right. The Lord's Prayer. Because that's an important one. And sometimes the adults forget the words. So you guys ready? All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me. You did a great job. And here, you guys can have a sucker. I don't want to play. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I'm, Pastor Michael might need that much coffee tomorrow. What? That's crazy coffee. Yeah, crazy coffee for nothing. All right, I would like to invite you to turn to hymn number 428 in the hymnal, the red hymnals in the pews. And join me in singing for the healing of the nations.
You may be seated. Now is the time that we bring before God and God's people the things that weigh upon our hearts and our minds, as well as those that give us cause for great joy and celebration. Do we have any joys and concerns we would like to lift up this morning in addition to Fonda's request for prayers for her neighbor? Well, I've been waiting a bit to announce this because I actually have all together three joys this morning, two of which are debatably concerns, so I'm going to start with those, mainly because two out of three of my nephews have birthdays this time of year, and uh, one of my nephews uh, turned one year old, little Fred, last Tuesday. Today, my nephew Easton actually has birthday today, he turned, was it seven? If I remember right, yeah, seven. seven. Yeah, and then the third one is about my dad, Tom Fournier. Those of you here and anyone watching this through Facebook, however you're viewing or listening to this, uh, uh, let's see, it was last uh, Thursday, he celebrated 36 years being clean and sober. So I will follow Nick and have three different joys and concerns. Um, I would want everybody to continue because we've had, if, it's, if not illness, then grief, then more grief, and then more seasonal illness. So please continue as you're doing to hold everybody close in, uh, in uh, literal and figurative hugs because we need to support everybody right now. Um, and speaking of support, if you could be thinking of Katie Bunier, she is ill today, but most of you may recall that um, she's had quite a few months. Last fall, um, they lost, she lost her mother-in-law, followed by her mother in less than a month. So she's had a time, and now she's had, I think today may be the third head cold this month. So she has had a lot of ups and downs. So please be thinking of Katie. And on a happier note, Rich and I are happy to say that later this week we will be visiting with his mom in Nevada. And Eleanor Bertva, who sometimes watches, she will be 89 years young, so we are very happy to be celebrating with her. And um, also if you could be um, asking for God's mercies on our travel so that we get there safely and back. And I was also realizing this week that this is now two years that my mom, Mardell Rankin, in, P in uh, now Springfield, Illinois, has been at her new uh, special care nursing home for two whole years now. And she's very comfortable and happy there, so we are very pleased for that blessing. She has, her health is very good. She's been pretty much healthy, apart from this week when a number of the residents there who have been sharing stomach flu. So she has some congestion and aches, and so we are hoping for rapid recovery for her and her uh, fellow residents there. All right, if you would please join me in an attitude of prayer. O oh God, whose wisdom surpasses our understanding, help us to grow as a people of blessing as we offer our prayers for the church and for the world. We pray for those who mourn. May they know the comfort of your abiding presence. We especially lift up the families of Daniel Davis and Bruce Upston, and all of those who are mourning this day. We pray for the meek, 
May they receive the goodness of your earth. We pray for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. May they be filled with goodness. We pray for those who are merciful. May they also receive mercy. We pray for the pure in heart. May they see you face to face. We pray for the peacemakers. May they be recognized as your children. We pray for those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. May they know the protection of your realm. We pray for those who are ill or suffering this day. We especially lift up Katie and many other friends and loved ones and family members who are struggling with their health, whether physically, mentally, or emotionally. We rejoice this day and give thanks for the many blessings of this life and for the gift of heaven, which is ours even now. We are especially happy to celebrate birthdays of our family members, being able to visit with our loved ones, being thankful for transitions in our lives that have gone smoothly, and especially the ability to celebrate with one of your beloved children who has worked so hard to overcome an incredible challenge in their life and is able to say that they are now 36 years along in that journey and holding strong. May we, with your prophets from all the ages, have the wisdom to pursue your truth and the courage to do what is holy and right. We ask this in the name of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. I invite you to turn to hymn number 3067 in the green hymnals and join me in singing verse 5 of Welcome to Our World. you would please join aloud with me together in our prayer for illumination. God, illume our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, our eyes may see your kingdom, our ears may hear the call of Jesus, and our hearts may know the joy of your salvation. Amen. Good morning. Uh, sometimes as I review the Old Testament, it's still is amazing to me that these people predicted so many years ago what came to pollution now. Um, and this was told to us by prophets. And the prophet we're going to listen to today is Micah. And my Bible tells me that Micah lived 742 years before Christ, and he became a prophet at that time. And through Micah, 
God told about some powerful events long before they happened. Micah prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, which he was. He said that Jesus would be the source of peace. And he said that Jesus would come back to rule in the last days of a perfect, peaceful kingdom. So then we turn to chapter 6 of Micah, and we read the first eight verses. And this is what Micah predicts the Lord's case against Israel. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Stand up and state your case against me. Let the mountains and hills be called to witness your complaints. And now, O mountains, listen to the Lord's complaint. He has a case against his people. He will bring charges against Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? What have I done to make you tired of me? Answer me. For I brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron, and Miriam to help you. Don't you remember, my people, how King Balak of Moab tried to have you cursed? And then how Balaam, son of Bor, blessed you instead. And remember your journey from Achaia Grove to Gilgad, when I, the Lord, did everything I could to teach you about my faithfulness. What can we bring to the Lord? What kind of offering should we give him? Should we bow before God with offerings of yearling calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for our sins? Oh no, O oh people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. If you would rise as you are able and join in hymn number 102 in the red hymnals in the pews, now thank we all our God.
may be seated. Our second scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, which you can find on page 958 in the Bibles in the Pews. Uh, The translation of the Bibles in the Pews is the NIV translation. I will be reading to you from the Common English Bible translation, and there is a significant difference uh, between the two. So I invite you, if you would like, to follow along in the NIV translation and see if you can find what, where the difference occurs. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountain. He sat down and his disciples came to him. He taught them, saying, Happy are people who are hopeless, because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are people who grieve, because they will be made glad. Happy are people who are humble, because they will inherit the earth. Happy are people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, because they will be fed until they are full. Happy are people who show mercy, because they will receive mercy. Happy are people who have pure hearts, because they will see God. Happy are people who make peace, because they will be called God's children. Happy are people whose lives are harassed because they are righteous, because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are you when people insult you and harass you and speak all kinds of bad and false things about you, all because of me. Be full of joy and be glad, because you have a great reward in heaven. In the same way, people harass the prophets who came before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me once again in an attitude of prayer. God of limitless love and creative power, we are continually awed by your creation and the grace you freely offer us. We ask that you would send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds to light a fire of creativity and confidence within us that we might share the good news with everyone we meet in all that we say and do. And now may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning once again, and may the love and grace of God be with you always. We are now beginning the final week of January of this new year, and if nothing else, No one can say that it has been a boring start to the new year. We are also entering into the third week of our sermon series, Gifts That Keep On Giving, where we're working together so that we might discover all of the gifts that God offers to us, as well as challenge ourselves and each other to dive headfirst into accepting these gifts. As I spoke about two weeks ago, For some of us, accepting gifts, whether physical or spoken, can be especially challenging. But as we continue venturing deeper into the Gospel of Matthew, I believe, I really believe we'll begin to see more and more the importance of the gifts that God offers us, as well as the need for us to be bold and accept them and use them for the kingdom of God and sharing the good news of the love and grace of Jesus Christ. So this morning we will be continuing in Matthew's Gospel, this time in chapter 5, as we focus on the gift of poetic challenge. Many of you have, have gotten to know me over the time that I have been here with all of you. And at this point I assume that you all pretty much know about my love of coffee bad science fiction movies, and probably a few other things. But I wonder, did you know that I love musicals? That's true. And I mean, I really love musicals. I have only had the opportunity to 
actually attend a few musicals so far in my life, but I have loved every single one I have ever seen. The earliest musical I can remember being in person for and seeing was Charlotte's Web on a grade school field trip. And then not long after that, Jesus Christ Superstar with my family on a weekend vacation. I have also seen Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Oklahoma, Auntie Mame, one of my absolute favorites, and the unsinkable Molly Brown, as well as the Jungle Book, which was performed by some of our, our children at the school, and the somewhat controversial but still rather entertaining The Book of Mormon, as well as probably a few others that I'm, I'm not fully remembering. But I think a part of the reason that I enjoy musicals is they move me. And, and not just because of the stories, but really because I am in awe of people who have excelled at the craft. Being able to sing well and dance with joy are truly gifts in themselves. But then when exercised together at the same time, all while telling a story, they're just absolutely mind-blowing to me. I love to sing. But let me tell you, you can trust me, you do not want to see me trying to dance. Unless it's a slow dance. And I'm not always sure if that really amounts to mostly just slow swaying back and forth, if that really counts. But when I am witness to someone performing with song and movement, the ways in which my heart, my mind, and my soul are beckoned forth by an individual's command of a vocal movement, a communicative facial expression, and the well-timed delivery of a line, that is all truly holy. I have to admit that I also tend to feel the same way about the craft of the spoken word, the way in which individuals can craft word and tone in order to challenge and comfort an audience is also, in my belief, holy and awe-inspiring. For those of you who were here yesterday during our funeral service, you, you got to see some of that when Virginia Davis came and spoke about her son. There are some that inspire with soaring oration, while others captivate listeners through their calm and careful speech. Like many others of, for whom using words is, well, part of our calling, I too often allow myself to be confined to a narrow understanding of how the gospel can be shared. And it's usually in, in defaulting to too many words. And in truth, it's a lot easier to do that than you might expect. It takes discipline and discernment to preach or even write with brevity. As some have quipped, I didn't have time to write a thousand words, so I wrote two thousand. For all its faults and shortcomings, Twitter can actually be a good reminder and offer the encouragement that there are times when we need to rethink the verbosity that we too often rely on. The challenge to convey what we might believe to be a deep and involved message in as little as 140 characters, wait, no, sorry, 280 characters, Although, actually, I saw a report recently that said it might increase to 4,000 characters, which kind of defeats the uniqueness of the platform and the purpose. But either way, to convey that message in such a short form can, can truly challenge even the most creative mind. I actually have a copy of a book 
titled The Twibble, all the chapters of the Bible in 140 characters or less. Now, this is meant to be on the humorous side, but it, it does actually do a pretty good job overall in summing up sections of Scripture. The entry for the fifth chapter of Matthew is J.C.'s greatest hits include Beatitudes, You Are Salt, and Don't Even Think About Adultery or You've Already Committed It. And speaking of the Beatitudes, I believe that the Beatitudes are, are really the best of Christ's poetic expressions of faith. They are not only a challenge to, to what we do in our faith, but a challenge for us to express ourselves in different ways. You see, Jesus is still using words, but this especially captivating portion of the Sermon on the Mount is really a challenge to think about not only what we share, but also in how we share. In this passage, not only are we given insight into the kinds of things that we need to be attuned to in our world, we are also being challenged to hear and express profound challenges in different and more creative ways, more so than we may have done in the past. And the absolute simplicity and even nakedness with which Jesus talks about who is blessed, or as you heard in the common English Bible translation, who is happy, is just brilliant. If you begin at verse 3, and read through verse 12. It sounds like a beautiful poem. Maybe even more than the good news it itself is offering. This is a radical message. One that is made clear and memorable for Jesus' hearers in those moments because of its poetic power. And in my opinion, this this should be held as a reminder that in order to share the challenges and the calling of faith, we must be creative in our expressions. That creativity can be expressed in countless different ways. More words, fewer words, better crafted words, no words. Expressions of faith must take many forms in order to speak to the many ways in which people take in information. I guess you could say I tend to, to think about this similar to how I think about how God speaks to us. I believe that God speaks to each one of us in ways that we are most likely to hear God, whether that be through the words and voices of others, through audible sound, or any other way. God has blessed us with such an endless array of creativity, even if we do not always believe that we have it. There are people who may say that they don't feel very creative, or that this isn't really their kind of thing. But when we look around at all the wonders of the world, and then also the wonders of the human being. If we are made in the image of God, how could we not carry at least even some fraction of creativity within? Maybe we just need some help sometimes in finding it or expressing it. I want you to take a moment and think about all the different ways that we could express an idea to each other here or to, to someone else. Things like story writing, storytelling, poetry, painting, sculptures, dancing, singing, and those are just a very small group of examples. And each one can affect people in different ways. 
And I do acknowledge that there are limits to just how much creativity any given community or group can, can take in one dose without the natural feeling to rebel. I hope that I have not pushed any of you to that point just yet. And assuming that I haven't done that yet, I do want to challenge you to take some time this week and really think about what creative ways you can express and share and experience your faith. Take some time and think about ways you have seen other people do this. Even if there are ways that you yourself do not feel comfortable that you could emulate, you still may find inspiration in what others do as much as others will find inspiration in what you do. If anyone is willing, I would love to take some time next week or in the coming weeks, maybe at the end of the service or during coffee hour, and invite anyone who would like the opportunity to share their creative creation. Not going to make you do it, but opening the door if you are so moved. Amen. I ask that you would rise as you are able and turn to him 2,222 in your black hymnals. This song is called the Servant Song, and just as in past weeks, I will sing the first verse and ask you to join with me for the remainder. If you look at the song, you will see the first verse says one and then a comma and a six. The intention here is that after singing the five verses, you return to the first verse and sing it again as the sixth verse. children of God and cherished siblings in Jesus, in the spirit of the Beatitudes, commit to leading a life of blessing, living in compassion, simplicity, and peace, 
And now may the Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine brightly on your path as you walk the way of justice and peace. And may the blessing of God, the Creator, Healer, and Giver of life, bless you and keep you always and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.